Egypt, a country marveled for its great pyramids and fascinating leaders. But in recent years, this country revealed secrets older than the pyramids. Before the time of Ramses the Great, Cleopatra, or King Tut, the pharaohs of Egypt were of a different kind. Roughly 95 million years ago, many different species of theropod dinosaurs ruled this region, two of whom were among the biggest of them all. One was a fearsome hunter of sauropods. The other, a much more unique theropod, lived a life totally different from all the rest. What were their lives like? How did they coexist? And most importantly, what drove them to extinction? These questions, and many others, will be answered as we explore the wild and dangerous world of prehistoric Egypt and its lost dinosaurs, here on Dinosaurs Unleashed. It's the late wet season. Unlike modern times, northern Africa during the Cretaceous was thronged by numerous swamps and marshes rather than desert. A bizarre paradise, one ruled by equally bizarre animals. This is Caprosuchus, a fully terrestrial crocodilian. At 3.3 meters long, this creature's name means boar croc, and it's not hard to see why. Caprosuchus is a savage beast, but there are bigger monsters in Egypt. And here in this river lives the biggest of them all.
Spinosaurus aegypticus, the largest theropod dinosaur to ever walk the earth. Replacing Tyrannosaurus rex as the star of Jurassic Park 3, Spinosaurus was meant to become bigger and badder than the Tyrant King, with unprecedented savagery and strength. And yet somehow cannot barge through a shed. However, since the movie's release, this initial idea stuck with both scientists and the populace. A super predator, unmatched by anything alive or extinct, able to take on anything and everything that stood in its way. But was Spinosaurus truly the hyper-carnivore that we built it up to be? Well, not quite. Or at least not in the same way as we thought. At 18 meters in length and weighing approximately 10 tons, there was no doubt that Spinosaurus is the largest theropod dinosaur known to science. But size is not everything when it comes to this dinosaur. Aptly named for the long spines on its back, Spinosaurus is believed to have had a sail or hump-like structure in life, where skin and muscle connected each spine. The most likely reason for this strange sail was probably for display purposes, and to intimidate enemies. For many years, Spinosaurus was believed to have been physically similar to its relatives, like Baryonyx from Europe, and Suchomimus, another Spinosaur from Africa. A bipedal theropod with long hind limbs to support its weight. But scientists have since revised this viewpoint on this bizarre theropod. On September 12, 2014, German Moroccan paleontologist Nizar Ibrahim from the University of Chicago unearthed an adult Spinosaurus specimen with a hip bone significantly smaller than originally estimated. When the skeleton was eventually reconstructed, the dinosaur had relatively short hind legs, very much unlike its relatives. On land, this would have made it somewhat quadrupedal, and some have argued that it walked on its knuckles, like modern-day gorillas. Although this form of locomotion wasn't ideal for hunting down large dinosaurs on land, it would have been perfect for hunting fish, a lifestyle that the Spinosaur family exploited and thrived upon. Because of this, paleontologists theorize that Spinosaurus took the next step in the transition from land-dwelling bipedal Spinosaurs to semi-aquatic, more quadrupedal species, thereby becoming more specialized and more adapted to fishing. As of now, the exact size of the hip bone remains debated, as some paleontologists, like Scott Hartman, have argued that the hip bone was too small and believe that Spinosaurus was far more bipedal than Ibrahim's original specimen, though still much lower to the ground than previous reconstructions. Nevertheless, since Ibrahim's discovery, many paleontologists, including Hartman, have lauded the new discovery as an important contribution to both science and the continued understanding of these fascinating dinosaurs. This large male is the biggest Spinosaurus of this area, and has kept control of this territory for almost 25 years. And he is an expert fisherman. Mawsonia, a four meter long giant coelacanth, is a massive fish. But no fish in this river is too big for Spinosaurus.
As the king of this river, this dinosaur allows nobody to eat his kills before him. For scavengers like Caprosuchus, it's all a matter of patience. Spinosaurus may be the biggest theropod of all, but it wasn't the only giant predator here. Further inland, the environment becomes less of a swamp and more of a tropical woodland. It's here that more recognizable dinosaurs thrive. Like South America, sauropods remain the dominant herbivores here in Egypt. These Egyptosaurus are among the most common sauropods in the area. At only 15 meters long, Egyptosaurus is small for a titanosaur. Even so, their size keeps them safe from most predators. A Bahariosaurus eyes the herd. At 8 meters long, this dinosaur is a quick and agile predator. But a single Bahariosaurus isn't big enough to take on an adult Egyptosaurus. However, there is a far bigger predator that hunts in these woods. As with South America, Africa is ruled by giant carnosaurs. And it's here in Egypt where the biggest and baddest of them all dominates. Carcharodontosaurus aharicus, the great sharp-toothed lizard. A close relative to Giganotosaurus from Argentina, Carcharodontosaurus is a monster of a theropod. At around 8 tons in weight, and estimated to be around 12 to 13 meters in length, Carcharodontosaurus is around the same size as its Argentinian cousin, with an equally formidable arsenal of weapons. To put it bluntly, its skull is massive, measuring a meter in length, and its jaws were packed with razor-sharp, serrated teeth. The name Carcharodontosaurus means shark-toothed lizard inspired by the shark genus Carcharodon, which includes the Great White Shark. Like the Great White, Carcharodontosaurus's jaws and teeth were perfect for tearing open and ripping out huge chunks of meat and carcasses. It's likely that a dinosaur of this size would have needed over 60 kilograms of meat a day just to stay alive.
Though we only truly know Egypt's dinosaurs for the past 20 years, their history of discovery goes back to the early 1900s. In 1912, a German paleontological expedition to Egypt, led by Ernest Strummer, went to the Baharia Oasis to find clues in regards to the origins of mankind. He never found those clues, but he did find some very impressive dinosaur bones. The bones of Egyptosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, and Spinosaurus were all discovered during this expedition. These fossils were soon displayed in the Bavaria Museum of Natural History in Munich, Germany. For Stromer, it was a paleontological triumph, but it wouldn't last. In the years following World War I, Germany, faced with economic disaster, put its faith in Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Party. Stromer was a strong opposer to the Third Reich, and his descent would prove disastrous for his fossils in Munich. Because the head of the Bavarian Museum was a supporter of Hitler's reign, he refused to allow the dinosaur bones to be moved to a safer location in case of Allied bombings, despite Stromer's pleas, simply because of the latter's dislike for Hitler. Then, in 1944, the Allied forces bombed Munich, destroying much of the city, including the Bavarian Museum and the dinosaur fossils that were held there. For the next 50 years, these Egyptian dinosaurs would remain unknown to the majority of the populace, and even to scientists. But by the 1990s, expeditions to North Africa began once more, and the fossils of these and many other dinosaurs and prehistoric beasts were discovered. Sucomimus, Oranosaurus, Rugops, Sarcosuchus, Anatosuchus, and many other weird and wonderful animals have been discovered to have lived here in North Africa during the Cretaceous period. What was once a lost world is now one of the most famous dinosaur fossil regions of all time. At the riverbank, the Carcharodontosaurus comes to quench its thirst. The Spinosaurus is here too, fishing for prey. You wouldn't expect large predators like these to coexist like this. But because of their different lifestyles, both dinosaurs can do so without the risk of competition. A Spinosaurus may have required around 500 square kilometers of territory to satisfy its needs, making competition for the best hunting grounds intense. This could get ugly.
it's a severe loss for this Spinosaurus. Injured and without a territory, he's living on borrowed time. This situation is made worse by an ever-changing Earth. In recent years, there has been a dramatic increase in sea levels. You might think that this would benefit a dinosaur like Spinosaurus, but it actually has the reverse effect. The swamps that Spinosaurus calls home are slowly disappearing, destroyed by encroaching ocean water. What swamps remain are frequently fought over by individual Spinosaurus. All of this has led to a decline in Spinosaurus population numbers. For the largest theropod dinosaur ever known, time is running out. It's the beginning of the dry season, and while the river is still big enough to support an abundance of plant life, it won't remain this way forever. The Egyptosaurus herd has moved closer to the riverbank to feed and drink on whatever resources remain. The Caprosuchus is also looking for food. At this time of year, lungfish go underground to escape the shrinking river, and it is these creatures that the crocodile is looking for. His search ignites the curiosity of this Bahariosaurus. Caprosuchus is fast. The Bahariosaurus is more agile. Meanwhile, the Spinosaurus rests in a small pool. His injuries have healed for the most part, but he is still without a territory. Most of the fish have left the river, and even the lungfish won't satisfy him. If he is to survive, he'll need to go further inland. As weeks turn into months, the inland forests begin to wither in the dry climate. For herbivores like Egyptosaurus, the situation may force them to migrate to wetter lands elsewhere. But there is one advantage to living in this drier climate. Without the cover of the forest, Hunters like our Carcardontosaurus find it difficult to perform an ambush. Somebody has come here uninvited, and it's not another Carcardontosaurus. In the center of a dried up riverbed, our male Spinosaurus has found a dead Egyptosaurus. However, he is deep within the Carcard of the Source's territory. For both carnivores, survival depends on having enough fresh meat to satisfy their ravenous appetites. And in this
this time of year, they will fight to the death over it. Once able to coexist with one another, these two carnivores, Carcharodontosaurus and Spinosaurus, shall do battle in the duel of the millennium. Both combatants lie motionless, having succumbed to their wounds in the intense heat. In the end, their fight for survival was in vain, leaving these once great prehistoric pharaohs dead and rotting, their bodies to decompose and bring new life to their world, a world they will no longer live to see. Spinosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus were the unmatched apex predators of their individual environments, able to coexist when food was plentiful, and were among the largest terrestrial predators the planet had ever seen. But they were also among the last of their kind. 93 million years ago, the planet changed once again. Sea levels continued to rise, while the environments themselves radically renovated to fit a warmer climate. Flowers and broad leaf trees would become more widespread, and this would result in changes with the fauna. The world that helped spawn this unique generation of dinosaurs was about to lead them to extinction. 
In the southern hemisphere, the truly giant sauropods would disappear, leaving behind a smaller but hardier group of long-necked dinosaurs in their place. With their extinction, the mighty carnosaurs would vanish forever, and in their place, new groups of theropods would evolve to become the apex predators of the world. As their swampland habitats were flooded, the spinosaurs would become evolutionary dead ends. Too specialized to adapt, they would die out completely. In the northern hemisphere, the giant dromaeosaurs would disappear, leaving behind smaller, more agile species in their place. It was the end of an era, but for the adaptable, a new one was on the rise, and a new cast of dinosaurs was about to appear to take over this planet. As for Spinosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, Egyptosaurus, and the other dinosaurs and prehistoric beasts of North Africa, their legacy would not be forgotten, and thanks to the findings of Ernest Strummer and paleontologists like him, we finally have some degree of understanding about a world we once thought never existed. It can only be guessed at what other incredible beasts could possibly be found here in Egypt, a country marveled for its great pyramids and fascinating leaders, and now it's lost dinosaurs. <laughs>